Okay, hi there. Jeff here again with another in our key diagram series. This is the second in a little duo of videos looking at producer subsidies. In the first one, we use the workhorse supply and demand model. This time we we'll go a little higher in terms of the analysis and uh, look at the impact of a subsidy using cost and revenue curve analysis, which you may well have used extensively in your year two economics. Quick reminder, a subsidy is a form of government intervention in the market designed to change prices and alter over time the allocation of scarce resources. And crucially, a subsidy means that the government pays part of the cost. And the example we used last time was that the government might decide to subsidise some of the manufacturing costs, perhaps of firms trying to supply and produce and bring to market battery powered and hybrid plug-in electric vehicles. OK, here's the analysis using cost and revenue curves, marginal and average cost. Here's a profit maximising firm. Initially, the output is Q1. They can charge price P1. The average cost of Q1 is, is uh, C1. And therefore, the firm is making supernormal profit, shown by the green shaded area. Now, if you subsidise the cost of production, can you visualise what happens? Well, both the marginal and the average cost fall. Uh, because the government is providing some financial support. So this happens, marginal and average cost shift to MC2 and AC2. Uh, I'm assuming a constant level of demand. That means that the profit maximising output moves from Q1 to Q2, where MC meets MR. Draw up to the demand curve, you can show that the price charge can fall to P2. That's handy, because subsidies nearly always lead to lower prices for consumers. But the subsidy has now brought down the average cost of production at Q2. There's the average cost. There it is, C2. So the charging price P2, but the cost is C2. Can you see here that the total profit, if I just shade it in for you, there it is, is much higher than it was before. So even though you're selling at a lower price, because of the subsidy and the increase in output, you can make a greater supernormal profit. Worth taking a screenshot if you're adding to your revision notes. That is what the effect of a subsidy is on a business. Now, the subsidy leads to a fall in average and marginal costs. Other things being the same, ceteris paribus. This causes an expansion of the profit maximising output and also a fall in price. And even though the price has fallen, the drop in costs caused by the subsidy leads to an increase in supernormal profits. Now, in theory, a subsidy can lead to both higher consumer and produce a surplus. Quite handy to bring that into your analysis. But of course, don't forget, when you're evaluating that the subsidy is not cost-free for the government, and that's a consequence for taxpayers. There we go. That was a quick look at subsidies using cost and revenue curve analysis.